In this video, video 2, we will continue what we did in video 1, but in video 1 we measured our interest rate exposure. We determined that the firm had a duration of net worth of 7.2 years. We determined that was too long. We need to reduce the duration of net worth by increasing the duration of liabilities. So in this, in this problem, problem 2, we are going to mitigate our interest rate risk via an interest rate swap. And here's the interest rate swap. Before we can do the interest rate swap, though, we need to look at what we're doing with just the normal debt of these companies, AAA and B. AAA borrows fixed rate at Treasury plus 80 basis points and borrows floating rate at LIBOR plus 10. B borrows at Treasury plus 320 on fixed and LIBOR plus 90 on floating because AAA is a higher rated company. But in order to set up the swap, we have to first determine who has the comparative advantage in each, in each um, form of debt. And the way we do that is we compare what AAA pays. They play T plus 80. And we compare that to what B does. They pay T plus 320. That difference is 240 basis points. We then compare that to what they do on the floating side. So AAA pays LIBOR plus 10. We compare that to B, which play, pays LIBOR plus 90. Here the difference is only 80. And that's, as we discussed in class, that's pretty normal because as AAA is a higher rated entity, as they go out further on the maturity schedule, they should get a bigger benefit because they're much likely going solvent over five years than triple B is. And so what we're looking for in the comparative advantage is wherever wherever that difference is larger, in this case the 240, that is where triple A has the advantage. So triple A has the comparative advantage on fixed rate debt. Triple B has less of a disadvantage in floating, so that means they have a comparative advantage on floating. So triple B has the comparative advantage on floating. And so to summarize it, we can say Triple A has the comparative advantage comparative advantage in fixed rate and triple B in floating rate. And we need, we need to know that because when we set up the swap, we need to know where each entity has the comparative advantage. Because if you look in the second paragraph where we set up the, the swap, we say before we do the swap, each entity borrows in the market where they have the comparative advantage. Now here is the swap. The swap will be, we'll have AAA paying LIBOR to B, and we'll have B paying Treasury plus 150 to AAA. We're actually going to set up a, a third party in here, an investment bank. In this case, we'll use Morgan Stanley. Morgan Stanley will be the counterparty to bring AAA and B together in the interest rate swap. So let's go to PowerPoint because this is very hard to do in, in Word. So let's go see in PowerPoint how this swap works. So going to PowerPoint, there we see the original debt costs for both of these entities and the first thing they're doing, going to do is go out and borrow in the market where they have the comparative advantage. You can see for AAA they go out and borrow at fixed at T plus 80 and B goes out and borrows at floating plus at, at LIBOR plus 90 which is floating. Now we set up the swap. The first leg of the swap we're going to do that through Morgan Stanley and the first leg of the swap, AAA will pay LIBOR to the counterparty, Morgan Stanley, and Morgan Stanley will pass that along to B. The next leg, B will pay, pay Treasuries plus 150 to Morgan Stanley, and they will pass that along to AAA. So the question is, what is the ultimate borrowing cost for AAA? Well, AAA started by paying Treasury plus 80. In the swap, they paid LIBOR, and in the swap, they received Treasury plus 150. So they paid treasuries, they paid 80, they, they paid LIBOR, they received treasury, 
and received 150, the treasuries cancel out and they end up paying LIBOR minus 70. So if you look at this LIBOR minus 70, the original cost would have been LIBOR plus 10, but because they did the swap, they actually saved 80 basis points. Similarly with Triple B, they, they first they start off borrowing floating at LIBOR plus 90, they then receive LIBOR from Triple A, and they pay Treasury plus 150 into the swap. So they paid LIBOR plus 90, they received LIBOR, so the LIBORs will cancel out, and then they paid Treasury plus 150. Ultimately, they end up paying Treasury plus 240, which if you compare that to their, what they would have paid in the market, they would have paid Treasury plus 320. So they also saved 240 basis points. But even more important, remember we're trying to find the entity that is swapping from floating to fix in order to increase their, the duration of liabilities. And in this case, that's Triple B. Triple B started off borrowing floating, but at the end of the swap, they were paying fixed. The exact opposite of Triple A that started off paying fixed and ended up paying floating. So Triple B is an entity that we want. And so when we go back to the Word document and look at the next question, we will see in the next question it asks which side of the transaction should the bank in question one be on? And the answer to that is Triple B. Triple B because they swap from floating to fixed, thus increasing the duration of liabilities Sorry, I'm having trouble typing liabilities and reducing the duration of net worth. So triple B is the one that's the answer here. Be real careful that you that you say duration of net worth. Don't in your answer say that they reduce net worth. They did not reduce net worth, they reduced the duration of net worth. We don't want to reduce net worth ever. We want to reduce the duration of net worth. So make sure you talk about increasing the duration of liabilities and reducing the duration of net worth. And then the last question, which is a fun one, here we're going to look at dollar duration gap analysis, which I really, really like. To actually calculate dollar duration, um, gap it's very very easy you just take the dollar amount in assets which is two billion and you multiply that by the duration of assets which from video one we saw that was 4.32 years that product equals 8640 we then do the same thing with liabilities dollar amount of our liabilities was 1800 the duration of liabilities was 400 it gives us a product of 7200 that difference of 1440 is a dollar duration gap a really powerful number to have it's simple to calculate and it's really powerful why because if you look at the question we're asking how much in notional amounts should we buy in a five-year duration swap. This dollar duration gap will answer that because if we take the dollar duration gap and divide it by the duration of the swap, that will tell us the notional amount we need. So the notional amount we need is going to be 1440, the dollar duration gap divided by the duration of the swap. In this case, the duration of the swap is five years. And that, that equals 288 million. And we can actually check this if we'd like to, because in doing the swap, we've actually changed the duration of our liabilities. We've increased it. How do we know that? Well, the duration of liabilities will now equal 
if we look at this, the duration of liabilities will now equal the original liabilities, 1.8 billion. But we're going to divide that by 1.8 billion plus the swap. The swap has 288. Our original dot liability duration was 4.00. Now we have a new piece of the liability, which is the 288 swap. We'll divide that by the original 18, 1.8 billion plus the swap and multiply all of that by the swap duration, which is five years. And when we do that, we'll see that our duration of liabilities has increased from four years now to 4.1379 years. A few, it goes out a few more decimal places, but four decimal places is enough. So if we did it correctly, we can now calculate the duration of net worth. And what dollar duration gap analysis is doing is getting your duration of net worth down to zero. So if we did it correctly, we want to completely eliminate, eliminate interest rate risk with dollar duration gap analysis. If we did it correctly, the duration of net worth should be the duration of assets, 4.32, minus the dollar amount of liabilities, which is 1800 now, plus the swap, 288, we divide that by our asset value, 2 billion, that didn't change, we didn't do anything with the swap on the asset side, but now times the new duration of our liabilities, which is 4.1379. We don't have to multiply by the leverage this time because if we did the math right, that number, that difference should come out to be zero if we did it exactly right. It, it does come out to zero. There's some rounding here because it's actually the duration of liabilities goes out more decimal places. But that that is how we use dollar duration gap analysis. Powerful, powerful uh, tool to use, especially if you, you're a pension plan and you want to take your interest rate risk down to zero. Dollar duration gap will get you the exact amount you need to, to eliminate that interest rate risk. So that's the end of the video too.